Hello everyone. Here is your story. A man owned a house that had a flat roof. Most nights he used to sleep on the rooftop. One night when he was sleeping he turned over and fell down onto the ground. As a result he broke his arm and leg and had to stay in bed for many months. One day a friend who was visiting him asked, Friend, what happened to you? And how did it all happen? The man replied, If you want to know exactly what happened, try to throw yourself down from the roof. Friends, pain is very subjective and a very personal thing. No one can ever know or see the pain a person feels inside, whether it's physical or emotional. Do you not sometimes wonder why you have not been healed miraculously or transformed or touched by God like the miraculous healings in the Bible or the stories of personal and spiritual transformation of others? Today's readings remind us that everything is possible with God. We can experience miracles and transformation in our life when we have faith and invite God to intervene, even in situations that seem impossible. In today's Gospel of Mark chapter 6 verses 5 to 6, we read that Jesus was not able to perform any mighty deed in his native place because of their lack of faith. Whereas in the second reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 7 to 10, we learn that Paul found comfort and hope in turning to Jesus Christ in his suffering and difficult times. In the passage, Paul recounts how he cried and begged God to take away his suffering but then realized that in his suffering he found Christ's power. Paul does not mention exactly what was troubling him, but rather calls it a thorn in the flesh. Thorn in the flesh is just a figure of speech, like a pain in the neck, which is commonly referred to a troublesome person. But what does Paul mean by thorn in the flesh? There are many views as to what exactly the thorn in his flesh was. Some biblical scholars suggest that Paul refers to some form of physical ailment or affliction. Some believe that he was speaking about his opponents who doubted his conversion, despised his teaching, questioned his integrity and authority. Some point out that the, the thorn refers to the false teachers who are trying to destroy people's confidence in Paul and undo the work that God had begun among the Corinthians. Some others believe that Paul is simply referring to a painful and unbearable circumstance or situation in his life. Because in his second letter to the Corinthians, particularly in chapters 9, 10 and 11, Paul, more extensively than in any other letters, speaks about hardships in his ministry, such as imprisonments, shipwrecks, beatings, hunger, thirst, sleepless nights and other hardships he suffered during his travels as a preacher. Therefore, I believe, whatever the pain or the trouble he was facing at the time, it was unbearable for him. So, in his deepest pain, he turned to God and begged him to remove the problem. But instead of finding relief from his suffering, he learned four lessons. 1. He says, Because of the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, an angel of Satan, to beat me, to keep me from being too elated. Paul says that the thorn was given to him implying that the thorn was a gift from God, but by way of a messenger of Satan in order to torment him. Why was the thorn given to him? He says, 
that it was given to him to keep me from being too elated. What does he mean? Paul had received many divine revelations which at times led him to put himself above all others and even boast of his knowledge and faith in God. So he believed that God gave him the thorn in his flesh to counterize his pride and arrogance. God gave a noble and righteous purpose behind the thorn to make him humble. That is to say, friends, Paul realized that God uses suffering to humble his children. 2. He says, Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it might leave me. Paul says that he begged God three times, meaning that he was persistent in his prayer that he might be delivered from the trouble. The thorn turned Paul's attention to God. He could no longer bear the pain anymore, so he sought God. If there were no thorn, he would have ignored God. In other words, Paul learned that God uses suffering to draw his children to himself. 3. He says, The Lord said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. Paul says that he heard God responding to him that he has been given sufficient grace. God gave relief, but not by removing the problem, but rather by pouring out his grace on Paul. God increased Paul's confidence in the presence and the goodness of God. God gave Paul sufficient courage and strength to get him through the pain and suffering. That is, Paul realized that God uses suffering to display his grace on his children. 4. He says, For power is made perfect in weakness. Paul says that in response to his prayer, God said to him that he shows his power when he is weak. God's glory and power were magnified through Paul's suffering. The more pain he endured, the more God displayed his power. So, friends, Paul learned that God uses suffering to perfect his power. Therefore, Paul gladly boasted of his weaknesses and afflictions and declared that he was, in fact, content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions and constraints. Friends, Paul was willing and happy to suffer for Christ because the power of Christ was being perfected in him. Friends, what are the thorns or pains or troubles in your life? Do you have any physical pain that you need immediate relief from, a disease or a terminal illness? Do you have any emotional pain that comes from broken relationships, rejection, loneliness, stress, slander, gossip, unjust criticism, separation or divorce of your parents or your own, anxiety or depression or financial hardship? Do you have any spiritual pain caused by your own sins like anger, hatred, envy, greed, selfishness, pride, impure words, thoughts and actions? Friends, I am sure that each of you know what your thorns are. Your families, friends and others may be able to offer you tips and means to help you heal some of your physical and emotional pains. But to deal with all the pains, most especially your spiritual pain and abasement, you need divine intervention. The thorn may be small but unbearable. In fact, the small thorns or troubles are often the hardest to deal with. But with God's grace being constantly available and sufficient, we shall be able to get through both the big and small situations. 
we can always approach God with confidence because prayer is the most comforting in times of suffering. As someone rightly says, the sweetest times of communion with God come in the most crucial times of suffering. Friends, but too often we neglect to ask God to intervene and perform miracles in our lives and end up settling for less than God's best for us. Sometimes you are hesitant to pray for miracles or for our needs, both big and small, or for personal spiritual transformation. Friends, let us seek God's counsel in the scriptures. Let us turn to God in deep in prayer. Be persistent in and firm in our faith and pray constantly that we might be delivered from hardships. As we pray for relief, healing and miracles, let us remember that we are human beings and we are weak, but God can work miracles in our weakness. Moreover, we shall remember that God works more powerfully in our weakness than He does in our strength. Let us also keep in mind that God is in control and that God has a purpose behind our pain and that purpose must be accomplished before the pain can leave us. Let us truly believe that through our trials and problems we are blessed, protected and perfected by the power of God. Amen. God bless you.